All right, another goal breakdown video, and the first goal you guys are going to see is scored by Marin Holly Selassie of Chicago Fire. And out of the two goals that the Union gave up to Chicago, I think this first one's the worst, and uh, we'll see here in a minute why that is. But on your screen, you have four Union players highlighted, being Mikhail Uwer, who's on the left-hand side of your screen, Jack McGlynn, Daniel Gazag, and then Julian Carranza. And Chicago do a good job getting out of the press from the Union. It takes six passes for Chicago to score a goal against the Union. And a, a whole bunch went wrong on this play. So as you can see on your screen, Mikhail Uwar is going to take away the pass to Tehran, the center back for Chicago Fire. And then you have Daniel Gazag and Julian Kranza pressuring the ball. Jack McGlynn's guarding Suke, the right back for Chicago Fire here. And this is just way too easy for them to get out of the press here, as you can see. Passes it right there to Fabian Herbers. And, and right here, I'm going to pause it. On your screen, you have uh, Ali Bedoya and you have Jose Martinez just push way too high up in the attacking half for the Union, the defensive half of Chicago Fire. And Chicago just have so much space here. On the left side of the screen, and I probably should have used uh, arrows and everything instead of the mouse, but it's okay. Uh, so you're just going to see nobody pressure the ball. Ali Bedoya is the one who should be helping Bizer here because you you all know what's going to happen. It's an overlap run from Navarro, and Chris Mueller is just going to slot the ball to him. And you can see on the screen the four defenders for the Union. I have highlighted on the far side of your screen. Marin Holly Selassie, who's going to be the goal scorer. You have Nate Harriel, Jack Elliott, Jacob Glesnes, and then Baizo on the top of your screen. You can see Baizo pointing out with his hand, showing that the overlap's going to happen. And that should have been Bedoya closer to Baizo, helping him with the overlap because they have the union outnumbered on that top hand of the screen. And so you're just going to see the overlap pass come in again going to stop it here and show you Marin Holly Selassie. So th this is guarded decently, it looks like, on your screen because you have all the defenders paying attention to the ball. Nate Harriel, who is guarding Marin Holly Selassie, isn't aware of the run from his back shoulder. And Nate Harriel should have done a lot better when this ball gets sent in. Same with Jack Elliott right here. So I'm going to see right there. Just easy tapping, and I'll go ahead and replay that once again. I mean, the overlap comes right here. Bedoya should have helped Bizer on here because everybody knew the overlap was coming, and I'll try to stop it in time. Again, Holly Selassie is going to be the one scoring the goal here. But right here, the ball gets sent in. It gets by Jacob Glesnes. But right here, why isn't Jack Elliott getting a foot in front of it in, in Nate Harriel is just caught out of position, caught ball watching, and he doesn't know anything about the goal right there. A again, one more time, because th this is just terribly defended. Why Jack Elliott doesn't stick a foot out, you, as a defender, you, you're not supposed to let that ball come across the goal. And Jack Elliott, Andre Blake, th there should have been better communication between those two. Both of those guys seemed to hesitate where they both so thought that one or the other was going to get the ball, and it doesn't happen. And because Nate Harriel is caught ball watching, it's just an easy tap in, and, and Chicago take the early 1 0 lead. All right, so this is the second goal scored by Chicago, courtesy of a Nate Harriel goal. And on your screen, y you're going to see this comes from a quick restart from Chicago. A, a terrible time for the Union to concede the goal coming out of the break. And you're going to see a couple players highlighted here on your screen where we'll start off with Suke, the right back for Chicago. Nobody puts pressure on the ball. As you can see on your screen, he's pretty much at the halfway point. And he winds up unmarked inside the Union's 18-yard box and sends in the cross, which eventually leads to Jacob Glesnes kicking it off of Nate Harrigal's back for an own goal. But again, Suke starts right here at the halfway point. Nobody tracks him back, which we'll get to that in a bit. On your screen highlighted now is Jack McGlynn and Daniel Gazog. And neither one of these guys are really showing 
a- any hustle to pressure the ball. They're just allowing Chicago to take their time, finding the pass, and that's exactly what they do. Again, Fabian Herbers gets the ball and has so much space to run into because nobody closes it down. And so y- you just saw a switch right here. Th- this is huge because Nate Harriel's caught out of position. Nate Harriel should have been the one pressuring the ball. Jack and Glenn should have been the one dropping off into midfield. That's not what happens. Jack McGlynn's the one who goes for the ball. And because of that, Suke's now unmarked. You, you see right here, Jack Elliott had to push out wide because Nate pushed way too high up. And, and Chicago's just going to find the way. Again, Suke just going completely unmarked here. And then it leads to a, a fluky own goal. But again, we'll rewind that right here. Just look, Jack McGlynn should have been the one dropping in to cover in midfield because Suke is going to make that run, as you guys just saw. Nate should have been the one pressuring the ball, not Jack McGlynn. And, and again, he, he goes unmarked. Look look at Suke right here. Nate Harriel's pushed way too high up. Jack Elliott has to go out wide because Nate's too high up on the field. And Suke's just going to run by everybody. He goes completely unmarked. Look at all the space he has to run into. Just a ton of space. Jose Martinez sees it, tries to react, and does a good job to get a little bit of a deflection on the cross, but it, it goes in the back of the net off of Nate Harriel's back. All right, so here's the third goal of the game, and this was the first for the Union that leads to a penalty kick that Daniel Gazog scores. On your screen, I have two players highlighted here. You have Navarro and you have Ale Bedoya, and, and watch what happens here. Ale Bedoya does a good job to press Navarro, but, but pay attention right here. Bedoya pushes Navarro into the boards, and Jose Martinez is going to take this throw in quickly. Shehos has this covered fine. Good hold-up play here from Mikel Ua, but Navarro comes in just angry because <laughs> he got pushed into the boards by Bedoya. We'll go ahead and take that back again. Bedoya and Navarro are highlighted, but just watch what happens right here. Out of bounds. Bedoya gives him a little shove into the boards, and he's angry. And so he's frustrated, and he comes in and hacks Mikhail Ua. Th- there was no reason for that to happen from Navarro. It-, it happens, and it's a stupid play from the Chicago defender, which leads to the penalty kick for Daniel Gazdag. And Daniel Gazdag, like he normally does, converts the penalty. Second goal that the Union scored, the last goal of this game to make it 2-2 for the Union. It, it comes again from another... Restart, another throw-in from the Union. Matt Real's going to take the throw-in here. And sorry for this, you're about to see the Apple directors decided, yeah, let's get a th- close-up of Shakiri the ball, while the ball gets thrown into play. And so a Chicago player heads the ball back, and, and you can see I've highlighted Julian Kranza, who's in the spotlight, who's going to get this goal. And then I have... Daniel Gazdag highlighted. Just look at the run from Daniel Gazdag from him being inside his own defensive half and then he eventually winds up in Chicago's box. This is a 60-plus yard run from Daniel Gazdag. Quinn Sullivan does good to, you know, be aware that this ball is still in play. And another pause is coming up here in a second because, look, look at all this space that Ale Bedoya has to run into. You see the Union have numbers. You have Julian Kranza, you have Daniel Gazdag, you have Ali Bedoya, who has a ton of space to run into. And then Quinn Sullivan is with the ball. You're going to see him put a couple moves on Kendall Burks here and creates that space. Uh, I have Shehos highlighted here. He, he's doing a good job, you know, paying attention to the ball, being aware that Julian Kranz is right there. And then you're going to have Kranz make that run, a late darted run inside the box with Daniel Gazog making a run towards the far post again. Bedoya has so much space to run into. And Quinn Sullivan's going to play a cross into at the far post. Guys like heads it down to Julian Carranza. And as I said on the podcast, doesn't that remind you guys of the goal that the Union scored against New York City in the playoffs? Uh, again, ton of space for Bedoya to run into. Great work from Quinn Sullivan out wide to create the space. You're going to see a darting run from Julian Kranza, Daniel Gazag running to that far post. And I'll try to get a quick pause in here. Look at this. 
Shears is not goal side of Julian Kranza. This is not what you want to do if you're a center back. And even Navarro is just out of position where he, he can't make a play on Daniel Gazlock. A, a great ball in from Quinn Sullivan. Look, right here, Shears on the backside of Julian Kranza. Terrible defending from him, and Julian Kranza just has an easy goal to make this 2-2 for the Union. 